Lavenham in Suffolk. You might expect to stumble across a farmer's market or even Morris dancers in this quintessential English village. So imagine the surprise when one of the world's most famous pop stars and his new Japanese wife pitched up here on a cold and wintry day in December 1969. That pop star was John Lennon and his wife, Yoko Ono. At the time of their visit, the Beatles had recorded their final tracks together. Their recently released album, Abbey Road, was at the top of the album charts. But John was entering a new era in his life. He'd married Yoko Ono just nine months earlier, and together they were embarking on an exciting journey of artistic experimentation. Yes. As two of the most famous people on the planet, their every move was documented. In this case, by the BBC. And it was on December the 5th, 1969, that the couple took to the snowy roads in a white Rolls Royce. Eight months before their arrival in Lavenham, John and Yoko had been involved in the infamous Amsterdam Bed-In for Peace. Good evening. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Hello. 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 Had this happened to be in sarcastic, so I didn't speak to him. And then he walked up and looked in this window, and he came out of the shop with two pairs of socks. Socks? He was stamped his feet, grinned at me, and walked back over to the car. Soon, word had spread to Alan Coxedge, district reporter for the East Anglia Daily Times. While I was talking to John, I said, what major happenings are you planning? Because that was the uh, gist of the conversations in those days of what they would be doing. And he said, well, not very much, but we did manage to flood the bathroom in the hotel. It was something like off another planet almost when they were here and about to take off and disappear into the air. They were making Apotheosis, an avant-garde film featuring and directed by the couple. Apotheosis means the elevation of someone to divine status. But whatever the film's message, it's the everyday details of a meeting with superstars that have stuck in the mind. Roger Deacon worked at a local building firm. We uh, had the basket up and down on this piece of scaffold and John and Yoko in and out. They had to be lifted into the basket. Yes, 23-year-old young man like me lifting Yoko into the basket. Everybody's envy, I would have thought. But John and Yoko weren't to take to the air. Although keen to make a film from a hot air balloon, it seems that the experimental couple weren't so keen to enjoy the flight. There was fire engine and uh, police and a tanker full of hydrogen, which we thought might blow up Lavenham, but it didn't. <laughs> we did think that they were going up, but they didn't. Apotheosis received a limited release in art house cinemas and was not universally acclaimed but the BBC documentary footage remains as a permanent record of a very unusual day in a very traditional English village. Imagine there's no heaven. Oh, coolest couple on the planet. There you go. Well, just like John and Yoko, Giles is having his own bed in here <laughs> in the studio, so we, we, we can't convince... <laughs> <laughs> We can't convince you to come out of there, Giles. You can't. I'm, I'm staying here for at least a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm good luck. loving it. 
You know, John and Yoko were huge world stars before the age of, you know, Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. Wherever they went anywhere, they didn't need to send out messages. People came to them. And they were peaceniks. They believed in peace. Yeah. And they said, John said, if I have to be a clown for peace, I will be. They planted acorns, you know. The, the year before this, they planted acorns at Coventry Cathedral for peace. Uh, not quite sure what they hoped to achieve, but anyway, they planted the acorns <laughs> and they left a bench there. The acorns, yeah. unfortunately, were stolen. Right. So John sent his chauffeur round to collect the bench. But a few years later, 2005, Yoko then went and planted two rather nice oak trees at Coventry Cathedral. They were into all of this in a bit. Acorns were a big thing for them. They sent acorns in the spirit of peace to world leaders. Uh, Buckingham Palace replied very courteously. Uh, the Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Trudeau, invited them to Ottawa, to Canada, for peace talks. And there they are. Monsieur Trudeau is the one without the hair. Okay. Well, <laughs> speaking of hair, tell us what happened when they, when they shaved their hair off. They, they shaved it. In the early they? 1970s, they decided to shave their hair off. Rumour was that they wanted a few days of peace to be themselves unrecognisable and therefore unmolested. In fact, what they did with their hair was to swap it with the blooded shorts of Muhammad Ali, world-famous boxer. He gave them their shorts, he, then they gave him their hair, and it was all to be auctioned for peace. What was he going to do with their hair? Well, he was also going to auction it for peace. Everybody right. was in favor <laughs> of, of peace. Everybody as, said not. Yeah. As I am myself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I look, that's four minutes you've just been lying there like that, Giles. But, four minutes well, is good. <laughs>